Welcome to Masterpiece Movie Superior Shows. I get up at 7.15, spend too much time prepping. Here, I go solo. I research, I overthink, I riff, I vlog, I ramble. I'm SJW. I jest. He, um, he jests. I jest. Now, welcome to my review and thoughts on 2022's the menu so i'm gonna start by telling you this was a movie i really loved this video will have some jokes and i will get into some serious topics and this is definitely one of those movies where you should go into it knowing absolutely nothing but if you want to know just a little I'm, I'm gonna keep it as spoiler free as at all possible in the in the review itself so i realize this video is long i'm gonna do what i can to make it worth your time I start this video with a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers. You can mute and skip head until you see me lower my index finger. As soon as I end the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. So, this movie is rated R, and so is this video. So, yeah, uh, there might be some swearing in this one. Uh, we'll see. And that brings us to... So, yeah, I have watched this once. I got done watching it, I guess, about five minutes before I started recording. So, uh, yes, the plot. Twelve people go to a remote island for an expensive dinner, an exclusive restaurant. And, you know, they're all... They're really entitled people. And let's just say the experience is significantly different from what they had expected. I really am not going to give very much. So, let's see. IMDb's more like this list compares this to Glass Onion, The Banshees of Isherin, in Isherin, The Pale Blue Eyes, Triangle of Sadness, Violent Night, Barbarian, which I rate a 10 out of 10, The Fablements, Bullet Train, Bones and All, Kaleidoscope, White Noise, and... Nope, which I rate an 8 out of 10. The rest of them, the ones I didn't give a rating for, I just haven't watched. So, the Disney Plus, more like this, ah, suggested section, compares this to Ready or Not, which I am intending to do, and I intend to do it before Scream 6. Bad Time at the El Royale, Fresh, which I also give a 10 out of 10, Barbarian, American Horror Story, A Cure for Wellness, The Bear, and No Exit. So, the, yeah, um, I remember watching the trailer for this, I don't know, uh, months ago, more than half a year ago, I guess, because I know this had a theatrical run as well. I'm not sure it came to my local theater, but, yeah, then it, you know, it's been on, I, I guess it was about a week ago that it went to Disney+, Plus, and, yeah, I, I knew I wanted to watch it based on the, the trailer and the positive reception. I These days, I'm not super interested in doing videos talking about stuff that isn't quite good. I, I you know, I get, you know, some of the stuff that's MCU, I will still do, even if I don't expect it to be good. So, starting with the writing. This was written by Seth Rice and Will Tracy. Now... The, let's see, so, yeah, so Rice wrote for The Onion, he was the head writer, 2011 to 2013, and for Onion Talks, 2012 to 2013, and a miniseries, The Onion's Extremely Accurate History of the Internet, in 2012, and Onion News Network, Onion Sports Dome, College Humor Originals, in 2009, which was a good year for them, and that is about it. So, so yeah, big fan of College Humor, including back when he was writing it. Uh, I know some of the stuff has not aged well. I still really, really enjoy a lot of their stuff. I'm not going to make excuses for the problematic stuff. And Will Tracy, let's see, he is adapting something called Save the Green Planet, it's currently in pre-production, and other than that, he wrote... Oh, that's right, yeah. He has written for Succession, 
2019 to 2021, uh, two, two episodes. And he also wrote for The Onion's Extremely Accurate History of the Internet and The Onion News Network. He was a contributing writer for that. And, yeah. I have not watched Succession. I know it's apparently great. I forget what it's on, but I'm almost 100% certain I don't currently have access to it. So, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to go out and... You know, if it's on Disney+, Plus or it comes to my local theater, you know, or I have it on DVD, that's, that's basically... Those are the ones I do. So, according to IMDb Trivia, screenwriter Will Tracy came up with the idea of the story while on his honeymoon in... I should be able to pronounce this. I'm guessing Bergen in Norway when he took a boat to a... I'm Danish, so I really should be able to pronounce Norwegian words. But I haven't heard of that place before. And that is the alarm because it has been six hours and I do still have a headache. There we go. So, uh, let's see. Yes. He took a boat to a fancy restaurant, Cornelius Schumath Restaurant, on a nearby private island and realized they were stuck or trapped on the island until the meal was done. And, yeah. Which does, it is, it is fun that he went and, I mean, he's basically one of the, uh, one of the people who go to this place and the, this movie does not have a very high opinion of the entitlement class i believe they are sometimes referred to or maybe i'm trying to make fetch a thing so one critic said i also believe the menu is very much a throw a bunch of themes at the wall to see what sticks sort of movie there are a number of undercurrents running through the picture but they're largely dangled in front of the audience before quickly moving on to the next one there is no overall take-home message or thoroughfare to be found here I don't think I really have a counter-argument to that. I suppose what I'll say is it didn't really bother me. I forget if it bothered that critic. Obviously, ideally, you'll want a more focused... But, yeah, it, it is true. There are things in this that don't really... Yeah, that that is... It just it didn't take a lot out of it for me. Yeah, so the, let's see, yeah, excellent movie. The irony of my writing a review of the, on this one is not lost on me. I ho Hopefully, I don't get invited to a film festival on an island now, chuckling nervously. Rafe finds that Anya Taylor-Joy are great here. It's a commentary on criticism and social class that is a little on the nose, but it works excellently as a dark comedy, which is one of my favorite genres. Some of the characters represent professional critics who mystify the arts and produce vapid assessments out of thin air. Other characters represent portions of the general public that mimics the culture of professionals and obsess over things that they have a lack of knowledge over for themselves. Others still represent members of a society that just rich flex on people with no real attempts to appreciate the art at all. The ending, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, This the ending is great. I don't want to spoil a whole lot. And let's see. I love the buildup of the plot, how it escalates from course to course. We're slowly dragged in. The title cards for all the dishes were hilarious. The menu is one of my favorite films of the year, one I appreciated immensely. Just a solid script and solid cast of actors with subtext that's easy to follow and digest. It mocks itself, it mocks the audience, the cast, everything between those. It breaks walls and boundaries a mouthful at a time. I can't say the photography is amazing, I can't say the sound is brilliant, the music isn't particularly good, and the acting is not Oscar-worthy. Yeah, I don't necessarily agree with those assessments. But as someone once said, the script, the script, the script. And on the menu is a delicious script. Yeah, so one person says, not quite a horror film, more satire with strong thriller elements. I agree with that. I've seen several of these recent movies where, like, people will say, that, that wasn't really a horror movie, where I'm like, no, that was, you know, apparently some people don't think that Fresh is a horror movie. I do not understand how that's, but I'm not going to get into that here. I forget if I saw someone say, yeah, some, some people said Barbarian wasn't scary. I'm not sure I ran into anyone saying that it wasn't even trying to be a horror movie, but some people did say it wasn't scary, which, again, completely disagreed. 
this is not a horror movie. This is a... Th yeah, it's primarily a satire dark comedy, and there are some thriller elements, but it is... It's, it's definitely... It's got tense, and it is this nice slow burn, but it is more about the, the satire than necessarily... Like, if you go into this and you just want some tension, you don't really care about satire... Yeah, it's not really gonna be exactly what you want. You know, the... the Yeah, one of the movies I put up behind uh, is American Psycho. That movie, if you just want, like, thriller stuff and you don't care about satire, you can still get something out of that movie. I'm not sure I would really recommend this movie to someone who does not want the satire in it. So... Some, one critic said, it's claustrophobic, the first 30 minutes are build-up, and then it gets increasingly faster moving, like Succession, which the writer and director have worked on. Yes, very true. And, yeah, if, if this is written by one of the writers for Seth, Ma I, I forget, I, I'm, I don't remember the names of the individual late night shows, so I guess, I just go by names, but yeah, the one Seth Meyers on. I love that show. And the credits of the most recent corrections actually referenced him having written this movie. And that episode premiered right here on YouTube just yesterday. So this really is the perfect time, even if everybody else has already watched this movie. And, right, uh, one critic pointed out how it... Or, or, yeah, critic or commenter on a critic review pointed out how... Apparently, this thing costs $1,250 for one night at this restaurant. And then at this point, the comment section broke down into arguments back and forth on whether or not it's possible to save up money for a fancy restaurant. Not one that costs that much for one night, but I'm not sure why we can't just agree that American workers are underpaid without going into such a distracting... You know, let's focus on what we can do to help that. But thankfully, some reviews do do that. Yeah, this is quite well written. Some people have taken issue with the way people act. I really think it's important to go into this knowing this is not supposed... You're not supposed to take this as a one to one. Yes, it's live action. For maybe some people would have an easier time if it was animated. It's not supposed to be reality. This is not They're not saying that th what happens is in this movie ever has happened or ever will happen. Are the basic laws of physics followed? Sure. But the people don't act in the situations the way that real people act. And that's on purpose. It's a satire. It's not a documentary. And, yeah. The, the, yeah, they get some really great jokes for all of these different people. And the... Yeah, the, the gradual build-up is really excellent. Like, you get the sense from basically right away, okay, there's something going on here. This is not... This is not exactly how it should be, but it only gradually built... Like, at first, you just think, this is kind of weird. This why, why are they doing this? Who is this? You know, and then gradually it gets worse, and you realize just how bad things are going to get. And again, not going to get into details. So, I think it handled plot twists well. Uh, not too many, not too few, not too easy to figure out for the viewer. I will say, like, some reviews mention so many details. I did not, there were not a huge amount of surprises left for me by the time I had written a lot of, re read a lot of written reviews that were supposedly spoiler-free. Like, each of them will mention at least one major thing that I don't think you should know before you go into this. So, the direction is quite good. This was directed by Mark Mylod, who has directed 13 episodes of Succession between 2018 and 2021, and 12 episodes of Shameless, 6 episodes of Game of Thrones, an episode of Minority Report, and I think that is 23 episodes of Entourage. I think that is about the stuff I even heard of. Right. Ali G in the house. 
But that was a while. That was like 22 years ago by now. So I think it can be... Yeah, this is not as, as, you know, yeah, for sure you can tell that he directed those various, you know, Entourage, I haven't watched, but I'm told is also about self-importance, entitlement class people, and the, the um, yeah, Succession also, you know, kind of ridiculous things going on in this kind of upper class it's, yeah. Yeah, uh, this is the first thing I see by him. Yes, you're right. I have not turned on a TV in the last 10 years. Good catch. I've been really happy with dark, progressive films that are horror and or comedy of recent years. I've agreed with the messages in progressive movies and shows for many years. I think in recent years, the filmmakers have gotten really good at making it very biting and not feeling like they have to, ah, you know, we don't want to go that far. No, no, it, time's up. It's been, it's been made clear. We have to go on the offensive here. We have to really point out how stupid and harmful a lot of these people and institutions are because it's, We've tried being subtle. We've tr we were subtle for decades. Not me personally, obviously. It's before my time, but yeah. So so yeah. I yeah. I already mentioned. I really love this. I am going to add this movie to the following ranking at the end of this review. But for now, ranked worst to best. Other than this, loved all but Antlers. Antlers not okay. Barbarian and Fresh. And I do. Th I respect Antlers. I don't think it completely... Got, and it's not because it was slow that I didn't completely love it. Anyway, so the... Yes, so so according to Wikipedia... Yeah, Will Tracy Dane da dined at the aforementioned Island Restaurant. Later suggested a story to Seth Rice ex inspired by the experience. Several figures from the world of fine dining were brought on as consultants for the film, including food designer Dominique Crenn, who recreated several dishes from her San Fran Francisco restaurant, Atelier Crenn, for the, the fictional restaurant Hawthorne. Second unit director David Gelb, who was brought on to recreate the filmmaking style from his Netflix docu-series Chef's Table, which they actually mention. In, in this, so, yeah. And in, 20, in April 2019, it, this was supposed to be directed by Alexander Payne. And, yeah. In December 2019, the screenplay appeared on the annual Blacklist, a survey showcasing the most popular films still in development. By May 2020, Searchlight, Pi Searchlight Pictures held the distribution rights. Payne had left the film due to scheduling conflicts with Mike Mavod replacing Payne as director. I do think Mark Mylod did a really good job here. I can't help but wonder what Alexander Payne. I am a big fan of election. So yeah, but the, the yeah, can't can't always get everything you want. So let's see the um, yes, so this is a user review. I opened my first restaurant here in Cleveland, Ohio when I was 21 years old and have been a hospitalian ever since. The f this film took the gripes and foibles of hospitality workers and turned it into a ghastly and riveting look at the fault lines of human nature and the excesses of the entitled. Brilliantly written and so intense, I couldn't tear my eyes away even in the most exorbitant moments, the many layers of back of house references and coded gastronomical winks were a special pleasure. I'm already looking forward to watching this film a second time to catch all the nuances and witticisms I missed on the first go round. Now, some people have said this felt like an episode of a show like Black Mirror, and they wished that it was rather than a movie. I don't really see anything about this that I think was like it didn't feel padded or overlong to me personally yeah i for sure like it could have been something like black mirror although isn't that one specifically about technology this one isn't especially about technology 
The Menu is a caviar black comedy with just a hint of horror. It should connect with a similar audience to equally dark comedic offerings like Armando Iannucci's The Death of Stalin. Yes, very much so. If, if you like that movie and you're considering this one, I'm here to tell you, yes, I think you will like this as well. And if you have watched this movie and you haven't watched Death of Stalin, I recommend Death of Stalin. I, I intend to do a video specifically on it. It is on the schedule. So, the... Yeah, the opening is them... Um, yeah, getting on the boat to go to the island, which I, I think does a good job of heightening the claustrophobia that is felt later. Because, one, yeah, once they get to the island, it is like, I mean... The boat's not there, you know, they, they have to, there's there's gonna be a boat to go and, and pick them up later, but, like, I don't know, I hope you can swim. Like, they are basically on this island, there's not really anything else that, that just, yeah, and the fact that we've gotten a glimpse of the outside world at the start kind of keeps, like, nagging, it's like, it's is like at the back of our minds. So it's constantly just uh, that 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 boat. You had to get on the boat. You had to go get on the boat. You had to go to the island. And now you're here. And now you're stuck. And yes. So I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending. By and large, the ending fits with what came before. I think it's a good ending. I wasn't bowled over by it. Some critics really did not like the ending, and I can kind of see why. There's not really Deus Ex Machina, but there is some convenient writing that just didn't really feel... I don't know. Yeah, I... I, I didn't love the ending. And, yeah. Now, the... That brings us to the characters. So, Rafe Fiennes plays Chef Julian Slawick. I am not going to give too many spoilers about his character. I'm just going to say he is intense and, like, really dives into this character. If, if you know very much about Rafe Fiennes, you know he's, like, he is so much fun to watch. I, I've never been bored watching Rafe Fiennes act. That includes Spider, which for some reason some people find boring, but I completely disagree. We... At, at first, he's a bit of an enigma. I will say, over the course of it, things become increasingly clear. Anya Taylor-Joy plays Margot. Now, I am a fan of Anya Taylor-Joy. She's an actress that you legitimately have no idea what exactly she's going to play. You just know it's going to give... She's going to give a really strong performance. Like, she might be the final girl or she might be the killer. Maybe she plays a bully. Maybe she plays someone who has been bullied. You know, perhaps her conventionally attractive looks will be underlined. She'll be seductive. Or maybe they'll be hugely downplayed and she'll be a shrinking violet. And some of the time you actually get more than one of these in the same performance and she actually makes it feel like the same character, which is very difficult. And... Yeah, I'm just briefly gonna call out. I've seen some people see fit to... say that the her appearance was distracting to them. Fuck you very much. Now, yes, so, some some critics say everyone will see themselves in at least one of the guests, and others have said that Margot is the only character that they could see themselves in. I think, personally, yeah, I, I was also... Margot was the one that was... The mo yeah, you could you could see yourself in in her. I really could not recognize 
myself and any of the others, but they're fascinating to watch, even if you don't feel traditional empathy for them. You're not really supposed to, I don't think. Taylor Joy, rep replacing the previously cast Emma Stone, is better suited to playing the mysterious soul of the Earth, Margot, who has no time for this bougie nonsense. And, yeah, I I like Emma Stone. I You'll, you'll hear me say very few negative things about Emma Stone. I do think Anya Taylor-Joy is a better fit here. Uh, the the um, I get why Emma Stone was cast, and I think she could have played this role and played it well, but Anya Taylor-Joy really does just, yeah, in incredibly. Now, uh, let's see. Yeah, so one critic pointed out, her character is difficult to root for simply because of how much a of a cool girl she is, without any nuance or subversion offered to the trope. And that is, uh, overall, yeah, yeah. I, I do think that it would have been nice if there had been a bit more there. And that is, yeah. I... I I feel like we should be getting beyond the, the cool girl. I do think that... I, I don't think it was necessary for them to outright name... Like, at least one character on at least one occasion in this movie straight up says... I, th I think... Yeah, I think the words are, you're the coolest girl here, or something like that. Or you're such a cool girl, so, something like that. I... Okay, we get it. We get it, guys. Like, I, I think that would be that would be a, a great bit if they were, like, doing something with it. But the fact that they are, just, like, maybe they forgot. Maybe that was supposed to... Maybe that was stage direction. Margot enters. She's a cool girl. And that accidentally someone, like, you know. And other questions. In interview, she says that they filmed it 360 degrees with everyone mic'd and improvising, and that energy is very much there. I, I don't understand how some people said this was boring. Like, I I never knew exactly what they were going to do next. I I found it fascinating, the, the way that just, yeah. The menu carries thanks to a powerful scenario, emphatic performances, and its fiendish appetite, but is stunted by its inability to put you in a seat at the table. And then, you know, okay, maybe. But then they go on to say, perhaps casting a more relatable actor instead of leveraging a rising star in Anya Taylor-Joy could have made all the difference. Anya is not relatable? Are you mistaking character for actor? I can understand not relating as much to Margot... Because, you know, at, at first, we don't really know very much about... We, we There's a couple of hints that there's something with her, but we don't, at first, know what. But Anya Taylor-Joy, like... Have you never seen an interview with her? She's like... She, she really comes across as just, you know, a, a legitimately nice person who has a passion for acting. Like... I've never, yeah, I've seen, I've seen several interviews with her for, for stuff I was going to do a video on. She always comes across as really down to earth. Like that is, yeah. And let's see. Right. And Nicholas Holt plays Tyler. I have to admit, other than this. I've basically only seen him play Beast in the X-Men movies. And in those, he's he's still kind of annoying and like you know, he they, they do the the stereotype he's he's kind of a, a nerd, but there is a little bit of an edge to him as well, kind of thing. He's he's some sometimes very annoying in those films, self-aggrandizing and, and such. In this I hear that he also does this in The Great, and I feel like I've heard at least one other role of his, so if you have watched The Great, you will already know that Nicholas Holt can play 
an asshole like few others. And he does such a, like... If I wasn't, like, still a little worried that he might turn into the Beast, like, he is, he is intensely punchable in this. The, the character, not the, the actor. Again, seen him in an interview, he seems like a nice guy. But holy crap, Tyler is so obnoxious, and he's just, he's so much fun to hate. They, they do a really good job making him deliciously had and that is another thing like if you don't like watching a movie where some of the characters are ones you hate even if you're supposed to i i would definitely say if you you know if you watch this and you find yourself hating someone you're probably supposed to there are some really despicable people here and yeah i he is like i would i would say margo is basically the lead there there is a bit of an ensemble going on but margo and and Margot is Tyler's date. They are at the same table, so we spend a good amount of time around him. And just the things... Yeah, he, he does and says a lot of really face-punchable things. And the movie makes it clear, no, 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 you're supposed to hate him. Because every so often, like, Margot will be like, are you fucking serious right now? Just so, yeah. Hong Chao plays Elsa. She's also really one of the MVPs here. The the yeah, she's she is she's intense from right away. So that's not a spoiler. And just yeah, there's a there's a very serious. She takes pride in her work. And she will be damned if these motherfuckers are going to come and disrespect her and the staff. And just, yeah, she's she's great. Like, um, I saw someone say she deserves, like, an Oscar for this. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I feel like Anya Taylor-Joy... Let's see. I've, I feel like she's the lead. So she, she should get the, the supporting... The, the, female lead yeah female lead oscar for this movie and uh, elsa should get the supporting although was that last year w whatever i don't follow the oscars i don't give a shit about competition that kind of competition i think it's good to say let's let's make the best movie we can but going out in there and saying here you made the best movie period of the entire year here's a statue that i think is ridiculous Janet McTeer plays Lillian, the food critic. I can't say enough good things about her acting on Jessica Jones, so I was really happy to find out that she was in this, and she is so much fun. Like, she just... She is, she is another one of these really hateable characters. I am on the record as not liking when a movie or a video game or a TV show or the like will go after critics. It feels, it tends to feel very petty. It feels like, oh, you know, here's a filmmaker who doesn't like the critics, so they're gonna, you know. Oh, I was about to say, wasn't that also Ray Fine? No, that was, that was the, um, ah, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. He played Gandhi. <laughs> I was looking for the movie, not the person, but thank you. Uh, yes, Ben Kingsley actually played a a chef. I, I'm pretty sure he was the chef in a movie that also was about, like... Oh, wait, no, that was... Yeah, that was the other way around. That was a, that was a food critic who wrote a screenplay where he is... Ah, hold on. What was it called? Parting Shots, I think. Yeah. Um, that was... Yeah, that was a movie written by... A food critic who, yeah, just comes across as kind of bitter and and just wanting revenge. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. To to be fair, it's not a completely unbalanced, but yeah, I I don't particularly like it in the first Psychonauts game. I would like to play the second one. I have you know. Right now, I'm not 
physically in much of a condition to play video games. Overall, I, I think I gave a slightly negative... Overall, I played it again since, and I really do... There's a lot to love about it. I think a lot of stuff works about that game. And there was that other... Yeah, I might as well. Uh, Ratatouille did not like the, the bitterness shown towards critics there. In this... In this, it absolutely worked for me. They really made her so perfectly detestable like she is constantly trying to to basically she's writing her review already you know which i i get like you know ideally you maybe want to start on that after you've taken in the entire experience especially and they you know they say in this movie, no, you're not supposed to judge it based on, you know, it's an entire night. There are, there are a lot of courses of food in this menu, and you're supposed to take it all in and, and let it affect you. you and, and she's like, you know, take a little bite and then writing, not literally, but that's essentially. And, and then Paul Edelstein, who is also hilarious, he's hilarious here and in the... Intolerable cruelty. He and and he's great as a dramatic actor on Prison Break. In general, love his work. He's basically like the the editor or something. I I I'm not one hundred percent certain, but uh, yeah, basically she will say something about the food, and he'll just say, "Oh, that's." That's exactly what I was thinking. You know, two souls, one thought. Kind of, you know. And and just, he's such a toady. And it's, that's part, yeah, Ted the toady. I think that is intentional as a, yeah. Right. And John Leguizamo is literally just credited as movie star. Like, in the movie, he's referred to as George Diaz. And, yeah, he based his character of a washed-up action star on Steven Seagal, whom he called a horrible human due to a particularly bad experience while working with Seagal on executive decision. And, yeah, there are multiple references to him playing a cook in one of his movies, which may be a nod to Under Siege, where Seagal also played a cook. And just, yeah, there's, there's very much this, like, don't, don't mock Steven Seagal because of his weight. That's not... But, yeah, he's an asshole. Mock him for that. And, yeah, one, one, one user review said, Actor George Diaz is played by John Leguizamo, himself a loathsome non-Italian actor who once played the Italian plumber Luigi in 1993's Super Mario Brothers, but criticizes Chris Pratt for voicing the character years later over race. Yeah. He criticized a white guy for taking work away from non-whites, as he should. Like, Leguizamo is Latino. Latino and Italian are not as far apart as Italian and white bread. And based on the trail, like, I don't, I don't give a shit about the Super Mario movie. I really don't. I, I stopped caring about movies based on video games quite some time ago i i barely even keep up like i don't i think there's two sonic movies by now i i haven't watched them i might never but in the trailer for the super mario for for the new super mario brothers chris pratt isn't even trying to do a good job like it feels like he knows that no one thinks that he's the one who should be doing it and so he's not even doing like I feel like at this point he can turn shit like that down. Like he's a big enough name by now. I've loved a lot of his work. I've been following him since Everwood. Even I can admit he's really phoning it in. So uh, Amy Carrero plays Felicity. And let's see. I believe she's the one who is constantly trying to... Um, yeah, just to make absolutely sure, I gotta... I don't remember everybody's name here, but... 
Amy Carrera. Yes, yes, she is the she's the assistant to George Diaz. And she really, really doesn't want to be. Like, she's trying to quit. And he's not letting her because he's an asshole. And it's just, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. And then we have Reed Bernie as Richard and Rebecca Kuhn as uh, or Judith, Judith Light as Anne. I think they are the, yeah, the, the couple, they're, they're basically regulars at this restaurant. And uh, I gotta say, I'm not 100% certain who Linda is um and then we have the finance bros rob yang playing uh, rob yang as bryce arturo castro as soren and mark saint Cyr as dave peter gross plays a sommelier christina brucato plays catherine and math uh oh, adam aldrix plays jeremy matthew cornwell plays dale I am just very quickly gonna skim because I feel like I've seen Christine Brucato and something else. I guess maybe not. It does not really look like any of this. Wait, really? Oh, that is right. Holy crap. Yeah. Wow. Blast from the past. She was in Welcome to the Dollhouse. I think that is what I remember. Yeah. Uh, 28 years ago, but yeah, that I feel like that's got to be it because I've seen that face and it's the only thing on her list that yeah Now Let's see that brings us to the uh, Here we go. Yes, so more critic quotes. To me, the glaring problem with the menu was that it lacked any character I could really root for amidst the bizarre nature of the circumstances they are placed in. It certainly isn't the chef himself, any of the other pretentious passengers. Let's see, clearly, the protagonist is supposed to be Taylor George Margot. And. Let's see. Right, and yeah, it's, this critic did a good job. Explaining the various, yeah. So as Margot and Tay, yeah, as they wait for the boat to the island, we meet some of their fellow diners. It's hard to tell which is most rich or most obnoxious. There's a restaurant critique and her obsequ obsequious editor. It's true, you really can't spell that without I O U. After every pretentious sentence of meaningless words Hal that she utters, he replies, "That's exactly what I was going to say." There's also a washed-up actor and a woman who keeps who keeps trying to break up with him. I mean, they're not together. She's trying to quit, not break up. Eh, anyway, uh, there might be a language barrier there. Yeah, he doesn't listen to a word she says to him. There's also a trio of banker bros who are the only non-white guests, as if to show that while new money can be relatively colorblind, it doesn't make you any less objectionable. The bros uh, are involved in a permanent dick-swinging contest, where they take in turns to behave so offensively that even they annoy the other entitled guests. And there's an older couple regulars at the restaurant. Yeah, some people say that the movie isn't isn't really left wing. It's more centrist. I can see what they mean. Um, yeah, I I will I will discuss the politics when I get into the spoilers. I can't really do it without spoilers. The cast makes the best of their respective roles with John Leguizamo, John Leguizamo as the former celebrity who strives to keep himself in the spotlight, Janet McNair in the role of a vindictive food journalist sticking out as the most enticing performances in the film, Nicholas Holt deserves a special mention as he delivers a plausible portrayal of a young gullible man obsessive with cuisine and chef Slawick, and his rendition of Tyler's role leaves many promises for a bright future acting career. 100%. Now, uh, yeah, one, one person said, most of the characters are assholes and not interesting assholes. I think that is a, a fair, they're, they're, they're definitely all assholes, almost all of them assholes. I 
think an argument could be made that they're not interesting. I think because of the movie's not hugely long and it does have this ensemble cast, I think I don't know that I would point to anyone as like the weak link or something and say, oh, they should definitely. I do think that this might have worked a little better if there were not as many characters. Uh, you know, like I mentioned, there's 12 guests. And it's not like any of them, are, you, you know, it's it's not like it's just saying, oh, well, this, this person is a real-life celebrity. You know who they are. We don't have to... No, no, everybody has to be established and has to get moments and such. And ultimately, yeah, I think if... If it had been cut down by maybe a third, maybe even cut in half, we could have gotten more more time and more development. As it is, yeah, they're they're not particularly deep or interesting, which you can make a, a character while making fun of. Again, American Psycho, you know, by the end of that movie, you have a pretty good handle on Patrick Bateman. You still hate his guts, you still think he's an asshole, but the movie has made him interesting. But yeah, I don't personally mind that it, that they're not that interesting, but for sure it is, yeah. Now, uh, yeah, there is a fair bit of dialogue in this movie, and it is well written and well delivered. So... Uh, yeah, this is one of those character. The, one of those movies that characterizes characters by showing them, like you know, we see how they react when things are going well. We see how they react when things go badly, and yeah. Now the cinematography is handled by Peter Deming, and he has DP'd some other things that I have watched so yes he he has 61 feature credits as cinematographer and two coming up and other than this he did the new mutants oz of the great and powerful cabin in the woods scream 4 drag me to hell austin powers and gold member from hell mulholland drive scream 3 scream 2 austin powers international man of mystery lost highway Joe's Apartment, I mean, it does have... It, I don't love that movie, but it's it's well shot for what it's... It, and Evil Dead 2, yeah. So he has a... That's a, that's a pretty nice, broad... Yeah. Yeah. And he, he delivers good work here as well. The, the... I think it works incredibly well here that... I've already mentioned that there are thriller elements, and... As such, you know, the, the camera camera work is extremely important in a thriller. And it's especially, like, the movie, I'm not going to say how much of it, but certainly a chunk of this movie is people sitting in a restaurant. Twelve people, you know, you do, yeah, how exactly do you make that tense? Because cause it seems like, I mean, it's not always the most wonderful thing. I, I don't particularly... I like the people who work in restaurants. I'm not myself a big fan of going out to a restaurant. But the people who work there uh, clearly work very hard. I, I want to make sure that's said. But yeah, like, it's not always the, be the most wonderful thing in the world. But it's not usually like a tense situation. Unless there's like, you know... A, a breakup going on or something but yeah they actually they manage to you know through camera work music and acting and at the same time when food is brought in yeah it is filmed in this like this is either a movie you know depending on which critic you, you hear or read this is either a movie that makes you very hungry or almost not at all hungry i didn't particularly want to eat it but it certainly looks good like it i, I yeah I, I don't really want to eat it but i like if if it were um i mean it is in a movie 
Yes, I like. Um, I think this movie would have fallen apart if the food just looked bad. It's not bad food. It's weird, and there's clearly something going on that we're trying to figure out, get to the bottom of. But it does look like clearly the they are artists, and that is critical. So the preparation of the food and the photography of the food are critical to making this movie work, and he does an incredible job there. It's it's so well shot. Every single... Yeah. Now, the editing is handled by Christopher Tellefson, who has 37 feature credits as editor. And other than this, he edited Assassin's Creed, which... I'm not sure I gave it full props for editing when I did the review. I've watched it again a second time. They really did do a very good job on the editing there. A much better one than I think I gave it credit for the first time. He edited Man on the Moon, Analyze This, The People vs. Larry Flint, and nothing else that I have watched. Yeah, he also does a really good job. The... Editing is also extremely important for uh, a psychological, uh, yeah, a, a thriller, and that's also some like if, if tension. If you if you don't keep, if you don't work hard to keep it alive, tension dies. It just dies, and he does a very good job. And yeah, personally, I don't think. I mean, I I can I can see how you could have made this as an episode of a TV show, I really don't think, like, ah, uh, what's that? There's a movie, hold on, what was, ah, uh, crap, what's her name? Well, she was in 300, so I'll find it through that. Lena Headey was in a movie, and that movie was clearly, it should just have been a, an episode, but, you know, I guess there wasn't a show that was good for it, so instead, they made a feature film out of... I can't believe... Ah. Uh, is that... The Broken. It is called The Broken from 2008. I've watched that movie once, and that was one time too many. She does good in it. It's not her fault. That was clearly supposed to be an episode, because it is padded like shit. Like... Holy crap. There's no reason for that thing to be... I, I think it's only 90 minutes, but there's no... It's at least twice as long as it should be. It, they... Yeah, I... I, I don't know with 100% certainty that this is what happened. So what I will say is it feels like someone had a good idea for an episode of something. Whatever show turned that script down, or maybe there just wasn't a show... Like, maybe it, maybe when it was written, there was a show, and then it went off the air before they had a chance to sell the script, something. And they had the script, so they were like, I don't know, uh, just add a bunch of scenes that change absolutely nothing. And, and like, they're, they're okay as you're watching it. But as soon as you're done watching it, as soon as you see the ending and you realize what it was all about, you're like... So that was a complete waste of time, and it was. And I really don't feel like that was the case here. The, there, there's no scene in this that I would just get rid of, or even trim. So there's not a huge amount of special effects in this, but what there is, is good. And let's see, I guess... Uh, hold on. Right, yes, so this was made on a $30 million budget, and it made 76.8, which I forget if that's still considered enough to be a success, but yeah. And yeah, like, the it was money well spent because it looks expensive. Like, I forgot, I read that it was $30 million. If I had to guess, I would probably have said around 50. It, it looks expensive, and it, it looks more expensive than it is. And, let's see, you're right, this was actually, some of this was actually filmed on this island, so 
just, yeah, adds to the, yeah. And, yeah, it's not, there's not a huge amount of different sets and settings in this, but it's used to its advantage. And, and a lot of the places feel kind of tight and, yeah, making it feel claustrophobic. And, yeah, actually, come to think of it, the, the dining area itself, they make it feel like, like, if you just look at it, like, yeah, sure, uh, there's room for 12 people, and apparently it is only ever 12. They're, they're never going to serve more than 12, or less, for that matter. And the, the, at the same time, when you're watching the movie, it feels a little cramped. Like, it feels not, not to where you're like, why are they not saying anything? Why aren't they asking for a little bit more space? but enough that it's uncomfortable to watch. Because, like, most of the time when we watch a movie, if it's not trying to make us uncomfortable while we're watching people eat at a restaurant, then it doesn't. You know, a lot of them, they just find a restaurant, they put the actors there, make sure the props are there, that's it. They don't necessarily make a big production out of it. This was very clear, like, they... I would hate to be the guy running around with a ruler making sure that every single little... Because cause it really is. Like, everywhere in this room, like, you know, all, all of the guests sit in the same room and looks big enough that you'd figure, yeah, yeah, uh, six tables for two each, and the whole, yeah, sure. But it is, like, it feels like they're trapped. It feels like a cage, which... You would net like, if you walk into an expensive restaurant, you look at the place and it's like, this is a cage. You are not going to stay there, you know, you're, so, so just, yeah, it, they really do a, a great job of, of this duality. The music is handled by Colin Stetson, who has one credit confirmed upcoming and 27 as you know that he's already done f as as composer for let's see i don't think i'm familiar with any of this i gotta say oh right not all of it is is feature film some of it is tv yeah i gotta say i don't know any of this uh i've, I've at least heard of one, one of them is the um the 20, yeah, the 2022 Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but I haven't watched any of those movies. Um, I, I know that the original is, is a classic. I might watch it at some point. Not hugely interested in the sequels. I have not heard good things. But yeah, the music is very suspenseful and tense. Um, I didn't personally listen to the, the soundtrack, but there's 42 and a half minutes of it here free to listen to on youtube you know i i tend to say if you're going to listen to the music for free on youtube also watch the movie but yeah if you just want to get a taste for it but yeah i didn't because i only started preparing for this movie eight days six days ago so i didn't want it so fresh in my mind but yeah using string and other instruments it gets across how fancy schmancy this place is the, the place, the food, but also gradually increases the tension as the movie needs it to. And it, it really does underline string instruments really do have a range. Because, cause yeah, like, it's... Some of the time it just sounds like, wow, this is such a refined place. You know, this is this is an expensive place to... And, and then, yeah, once the... I forget, there there is like a term, the the... The tense string something or other. And it does also use a little licensed music, but is largely original score. The sound design is excellent. I don't think these things make quite as much noise as they are shown to, but it does really... Like, honestly, I feel like they must have had a had a microphone right up against the thing 
to get the proper noise. So they've like they they recorded the noise, yeah, Foley, and filmed it separately because you can't possibly get that much such crisp audio out of food pre preparation whilst it also looks but but yeah and um on multiple occasions the chef will clap and it is this very sharp noise that just immediately really sharpens focus and just yeah so let's see right i can briefly talk about the the comedy so yeah uh, you know a lot of dark comedy there is some verbal comedy there are ah uh, let's see there's there's a there's some really underplayed jokes there are uh, a lot of a lot of jokes from from like stereotyping and and such where characters will literally say things that are like basically memes by now like there are there, I I don't know if anybody still in real life actually says do you know who I am I I feel like that's such a punchline by now like I I don't I wouldn't be able to take someone seriously if I if I met if if I overheard a famous person bothering a service worker saying do you know who i am like I, I feel like that's one of those like that's like um like if someone calls you mr superior shows i'd be like oh, mr superior that's that's my father that's my grandfather no 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 just call me masterpiece movies please let's be on a first name basis here so the pacing yeah some some people thought that it didn't move quite fast enough I mean, I just, I find that the movie is just too fascinating for it to ever be boring. Like, there's always something to take in. I, I suppose one thing I will definitely say, some people found it very frustrating that the characters, like, even, like, some of the characters, a long time will pass without them doing very much to actually um what's the word to to do very much to to like ensure their own safety for example and and to really yeah and and some people found that extremely frustrating i thought it really worked but yeah like if that's the kind of thing you're going to find frustrating this is a movie that's going to frustrate you so yeah do with that what you will i i completely understand skipping this movie based on that now, the movie is an hour and 40 and a half minutes long without end credits, and an hour and 48 minutes long with them, and I haven't yet noted, but I will just briefly fire up the movie one more time, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sit and just watch it, but I'm going to, like, you know, it's on Disney+, Plus, so I can just point to... The timeline and see when the various things so that's actually huh, okay yeah yeah I would say if you give it to just just shy of 40 minutes if at that point you're just not interested you can stop watching you know unless you're like watching with someone they're gonna be annoyed if you leave or something and yes the best element for me is definitely the satire the worst aspect i don't have a lot of criticism of this movie but i suppose and our yeah yeah overall the the worst part is probably the ending but i don't think it it didn't destroy the movie for me it did apparently for some people but yeah if you know yeah i don't think it's a it's a big deal and i think if you go into it knowing that some people really hate the ending you'll be better prepared 
I probably wouldn't have been very upset even if I hadn't, but yeah, I had read that a lot of people didn't like the ending. Now, worst things according to others, the script and the acting are the only good things, which I disagree with. I was most worried that it would just be too ridiculous. It, you know, satire is very, very finely... You, you have to be extremely careful to not get too ridiculous. I... Yes, it exceeded my expectations. And... Yeah, I was especially looking forward to more great acting by Anya Taylor-Joy and Janet McTeer. And... Yeah, they... I... I yeah. I really, really love their work. So, uh, both trailers do give too much away, but they also give you a pretty good idea of whether or not you like the movie. And it is... it. There's a lot that it doesn't give away. The cover and poster do not give too much away and do give you a decent idea of what the movie is like, as, as much as it can. And that, right, so here on YouTube, I found five clips, the two trailers, nine TV spots, 23 review analysis, two documentaries, six reactions. So, yeah, you know, other people have talked about this already, thankfully. So on Rotten Tomatoes, it has an 89% based on 297 reviews and a 76 audience score based on over a thousand verified ratings. The critics' consensus is while its social commentary relies on basic ingredients, the menu serves up black comedy with plenty of flavor. And the audience says the menu's got a great cast, plenty of fun moments, although the ending might strike some as a little tough to swallow. And I've actually seen at least one other movie where that where they said, oh, you know, the ending. So, yeah, I think general audiences, I guess general audiences care more about bad endings than critics do. Or maybe just disagree on what bad endings are. Who's to say? Someone who studied it, I guess. The average critic rating was 7.50 out of 10. And of the 297, 264 of the reviews are fresh and yes so 76 percent of the over 1,000 verified ratings were uh, uh, 3.5 and above and the average rating was in fact 3.9 out of 5 and yeah it's certified fresh and on Metacritic it has a 71 based on 45 critic reviews and a 6.7 user score oh 6.5 based on 187 ratings huh so yeah i actually i copied this stuff in six days ago and it's yeah 17 people have watched it in between and it went down two points so yeah i am not the only person who realized it's on disney plus uh, of the 187 ratings, 118 are positive, 39 are mixed, and only 30 are negative. And of the 45 critic reviews, 36 are positive, 8 are mixed, only one negative. Ah, this person says, designer cynicism is... Ex uh, let's see, and... Okay, um, let's see. Yeah, so on IMDb, it has... I guess I should check that. Might also have changed in the interim. There are 737 IMDb user reviews, 534 without spoilers, and I read the top voted 100 from six days ago, and those, wow, 18 of the 100 gave it a 1 out of 10, 3 gave it 2, 8 gave it 3, 7 gave it 4, 9 gave it 5, 17 gave it 6. And then we get into the ones that I think make sense. 10 gave it 7, 14 gave it 8, 10 gave it 9, and 10 gave it 10. So, yeah, that's a lot of people don't like, yeah. 
For for sure, like I can understand. I I one one thing I saw was that some people really did not like going into this expecting a horror movie, and that I do understand. I would I have been disappointed if I really thought M maybe yeah yeah like if I went into this thinking it was gonna be fresh or barbarian yes i would have been disappointed i i knew it wasn't but i yeah it has a it, hold on, there we go so yes it has a 7.3 out of 10 based on 157,562 imdb user votes 29.7% gave it 7, 29.5 gave it 8. That makes a lot of sense. 12.9 gave it 6, 11.4 gave it 9, 6.7 gave it 10, 4.7 gave it 5, 2.0 gave it 4, 1.4 gave it 1. Wow. 1.1 gave it 3, and 0.7% gave it 2. So. Yeah, I I don't know. I I guess maybe the way people behaved and the way characters were characterized is almost almost must be why you would give it that low. Now, it won one award and was nominated for 41. So, let's see. Right, so Anya Taylor-Joy was nominated for Amsterdam and The Northman. Yeah, I do hear good things about those. Hong Chao was also, but that was for The Whale, and the screenplay was nominated. Let's see, I... Hmm... I'm having trouble spotting the one they won. I guess maybe it's just further... Okay, here we go. So they won a North Texas Film Critics Association, f the Gary Murray Award for Best Ensemble. That does make a lot of sense. I, I gotta say, there's I haven't watched very many ensemble films from 2022, but this one really was an excellent one. I could imagine that it might be the very best. So, the, right, there's also some really excellent stunt work. So yeah, this is not a hugely violent movie. There is some, and it definitely, like, it gets a, a response from the audience, but it's not really about the, the violence. And, and I would definitely... I don't quite agree that this is a horror movie. I, I would say thriller makes sense. Satire makes sense. I think you could view it as just a comedy, a dark comedy. But I don't really agree with the... Yeah, calling it a horror movie. Now, uh, I expect there will be two links in the description box of reviews that I recommend reading. In fact, I believe I forgot to put them. I will just very quickly take care of that immediately. There we go. And there. So, the... I haven't done it much, but I did put a... I've been meaning to... If, if I... If I... If in one of these videos if i come across like one line in the movie that i really want to make sure everybody hears th I, I would put it in this part of the video i just want to say i loved basically every single line that anya taylor joy said both writing and delivery actually yes um and this one it's it's very very early in the movie so i'm not giving anything away but Tyler catches her about to smoke a cigarette and he says please don't it'll kill your palate and she deadpans then my palate will die happy 
which is just yeah it's been a while since i since i watched something where someone brought out the old chestnut then the will die happy but yeah that was that's a really good turn of phrase to to just yeah now uh, according to google at least here i i'm starting to think that google just tells me wh where it can be streamed in denmark but yeah if you're here in denmark disney plus google play via play and right here on youtube and yes i rate this eight unexpected turns at a restaurant out of ten and uh let's see yeah so this was already well received I think this is also something that, like, I could imagine some of the people who didn't like it now. I'm not saying they're wrong, but I, I think it is a movie that if you don't, if you, if, if capitalism doesn't bother you, if, if you aren't upset at class discrepancy, read a book, but also you know, if that hap if you later come to, you know, yeah, appreciate these things, give this movie another viewing, and I think you might like it more. But again, to be clear, you're allowed to not like it. I'm not telling you what you can and can't like, and there are other reasons. I've I've seen people who did like those things, who still didn't like the movie overall, and that brings us. To the thought sections so oh right i holy crap i completely forgot about the actually yeah i yeah so let's see i put it ah uh, there we go yeah so the the other the other dark yeah so updated list Dark progressive films that are horror and or comedy of recent years. Worst to best. Love all but Antlers. Antlers. Not okay. The Menu. Barbarian and Fresh. Well, ultimately, it's not quite as good as Barbarian and Fresh. And that is... Yeah. I, I would say they have better direction and a more focused satire more the the social commentary is more focused and thus more effective and that brings us to the spoilers and we are going to start with notes oh hold on there we go and here we are so notes taken while watching so yeah, Margot's really, really great from right away. Absolutely love her character. And, let's see, yeah, and she points out, it's your dime. And, you know, at the time, we think, oh, yeah, because he's paying for dinner. But later we realize, well, she's an escort, so he paid for her to be there. And Elsa is super intense from right away, which I also really love. Like, the reaction... When, like, you know, the, the, ah, what's it called? You know, the, the, um, is that, uh, I just gotta make sure that this is, it is. When, when she realizes that Margot is not, what was it, Miss, Miss Velder that, and, and Margo won't give her last name. She just says, it's just Margo. And just the eyes. Holy crap. Is there some chance that she broke up with him because she realized that he wanted, that, that he was fine with her dying at this restaurant? Nah, probably not. Should the movie have had Margo, like, deliver a to-go and, and, like, set fire at the end. Nah. Just, just, you know, snowballing here. And, yeah, I, I like when, when the, 
Ah, what's it called? It's the, um... I can't believe I'm already blanking on the names, but here we are. Um, Janet Lillian. That's it, not Jillian. I'm thinking of Jessica Jones again. I think about Jessica Jones a lot. I'm, I'm watching season three right now, so yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, she, you know, she says biome. And then Ted is like, oh, so it's like, it's, and she's like, I like Biome better. And then, oh, yeah, yeah, Biome's better, Biome's better. And I really love Elsa walking through the, the death that they would suffer if the meat wasn't, you know, didn't get the exact amount of, of time to, you know. And, and then she smiles after, so it's just, yeah. And... Yeah, I, I like that George, you know, he clearly loves attention. He keeps saying that he doesn't, but he clearly just wants people to, to recognize him. And, you know, he's making bad boat jokes and all this stuff. And, yeah, Tyler talks to one of the, the servers, and he's like, he knew my name. And Margo's like, I noticed you didn't ask him his name. You know, just, yeah. And the, um, hmm, is that, right, right, yeah, the, the yeah, I, I really like the, when, you know, I guess I'll call him chef, you know, he's, he's staying there and, you know, taste the thing and the, the guy is just, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, you know, and, and it, Finally, Chef says, okay, you know, and, and the guy looks like he's just been told, we'll stay your execution for another day. And, yeah, you know, the, the chef says, accept and forgive. And it's like, okay, can we get ours to go? Like, in, just... Even at this point, it is like, okay, something is, something is wrong here. This is not okay. You know, this is, he's not just, like, really proud and, and kind of in, proud of his work and intense. No, there's something wrong here. And... Let's see. Yeah, yeah, I, I love when, like, um, Tyler is like explaining to Margot while the, the, yeah, while, while Chef is, you know, and he's like, he catches him in it and, and calls him out on it. And, and Tyler like looks down and is like, I'm, I'm sorry, sh I'm sorry, Chef. S sorry, sir. I love the, I, I don't, is, is that just a, a thing? Cause I, or, or, there was also a moment like this in, um, Thor Love and Thunder, so maybe just, just I, I really get, like, heavy, like, t you know, high school teacher vibes, like, is there something you'd like to share with the rest of the class, Tyler? Just, it's, I absolutely love it, just, just the, and it, it is, like, I'm sure countless um, service workers have been in a situation where they were like, can you believe this motherfucker? Okay, don't do that. You know, just so, yeah. And... Even if I hadn't already been on board, and I had, but when when Lillian said, it's, it's thalassic, and then goes on to explain it because the, the, the other guy doesn't know... That was when, okay, you know what? Some critics, not all, but some critics can go fuck themselves. And I, re I like when the, the actor pitches the, the food show. And, I, like, at first I, I thought, oh, she's going to be polite and say, oh, that's great, boss. But no, she's like, this is a disaster. You're not going to get this job. And... I love this read of of the Bible 
of Jesus Christ told us to beg for our daily bread. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's exa that's exactly how he how the how it was intended. But I like when when you make fun of religious texts. So I'll yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> and it is like that is the way he would see it. That is, you know, chef. This this chef is like just and and you're not you're not poor. So breadless bread dish, <laughs> you know, and and just. And like almost everyone is like, oh come on, you know, it's like the just just so so great. And I loved when Elsa walks up to, to Lillian. Another broken emulsion. Uh, or was it courtesy of, of Chef? <laughs> Again. Like, I'm not a service worker. Um but I do know some, and yeah, I this is I'm gonna be recommending recommending this too, because that that is such you know love that power move. That is something that a lot of you know, countless service workers would have loved to be like, because because that really is like that is that is she couldn't like like it's 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 liquid, so she can't literally put it in the shape of a middle finger. But that's basically what it is. Let's see. And... Um, yeah, I, I love the, you know, you know, they, they, one of the, one of the finance bros asks Elsa, you know, let's, yeah, yeah, funny, funny, funny joke. Get us some bread. Get us, get us some bread. Come on. Uh, do you know who I am? You know, and yeah, I, I know who you are. And and then she she leans in close and whispers in his ear, "You will eat less than you imagine, and more than you deserve." And it's like, oh, okay, that's that's horrifying. So so that's. I feel like that should that line and that reading should be like the 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 snooze alarm. Like if you if you. You know, if you're like, okay, just five more minutes, and then you press, and then that comes, because then you're awake. You hear that, you're like, okay, where, where is Elsa? Um, how do I, how do I stop her? Let's see, and uh, hmm, I, what does this mean? Oh right, right. The the yeah, yeah. I I liked when you know Chef goes up to to Margo. You're not eating. Why aren't you eating? You know, you you should be eating. And she returns fire. She's like, does it's something about like, oh, this doesn't really appeal to me. And and you know these just yeah. Let's see. And yeah, we were told about. The drunk mother and father, and the you know he he's like I should have stabbed him in the throat, but as kids we don't really you know we're not quite we you know we're we're not as smart when when we're children. <laughs> Just wow. Let's see, and yeah, the tortillas have pictures of. The restaurants Lillian has gotten closed with her reviews and the the wire transfer stuff. I really loved, yeah, I love I love that like like Brad Jones. I I loved that Tyler like even as like insane stuff is happening around him, he's still like, do you think Chef likes me? You know, is it, he hates me. <laughs> and the the. I really loved when when the when one of the finance bros points and and says, "What it, what is this shit?" And she's like, "Tortillas deliciosas." D d no, no, look what what is this? Tortillas deliciosas with laser printed images of your what was it in invoices or tax returns or something like that? You know, just yeah. And and I love, you know, he's like, you know, whatever. 
We'll have you closed by morning. That won't be necessary. <laughs> and that, again, is when you realize shit's going down. This is not, like, that's... <laughs> she was way too prepared for that. You know, she, she knew at some point during this evening, one of them will say, you know, just you wait when I get back from this island things there will be consequences and she is 100 percent she she knows how this is gonna go so she just yeah <laughs> just that won't be necessary and let's see yeah and and you know tyler snaps his fingers at her at, at margo and calls her a child so she goes out to to have a smoke in the in the ladies room which I, was, I really appreciate that she is, like, not taking his shit. Like, at, at first, he's just being kind of a douchebag. And she's like, you're being kind of a douchebag. And then once he, like, once once he graduates from douchebag to raging asshole, she's just not having it anymore. Right, I, um, I ended up not writing it down, but I do want to briefly talk about... So, apparently... It wasn't in the script that Margot strike Tyler. At least, not if no, no. Apparently, none of it was in the script. But you know, she she slaps him once, and then after she, you know, I'm gonna fucking kill you, Tyler, and like hits him in the face, and then the the staff, you know, hold her back. That wasn't in the script, and and you know. Um, Nicholas Holt said that, no, 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 he said, yeah, I'm, I was fine, I was fine. It wasn't in the script. And then, you know, Anya explains in, in this interview, she has this thing about, I think, I think it was female rage, not feminine rage. And she points out there's so many movies where a guy does something awful to a woman and she's just like sitting there helplessly crying. And she's like, no, 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 we get mad we get angry and you know she yeah she she really wanted she she told the director i'm going to i'm going to hit him and the director said, oh so like no no like slam no 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 i'm going to hit him otherwise it's just not going to be i think she said honest or real some something like that and i really appreciate that i'm i'm glad you know i'm i'm glad that she has that kind of honesty about because, cause yeah, like, there's countless... I've seen so many movies where women are just victims and never get... Yeah. You know, so, so yeah, I'm glad she has those views and that she is able to push through. Like, there's a lot of actors who wouldn't have been able to, you know. So, yeah, that's more like her in Hollywood. So, um, let's see. Yeah, and the uh, Margot and Chef talk in the bathroom. I forget if this is where, but at some point he points out, you know, do you really think I wouldn't recognize a fellow service worker? And, uh, you know, the mess by, I think his name was Jeremy something. And, you know, he's he's a good chef, but he'll never be great. And let's see the the yeah yeah you know so the mess by you know and he falls over and everyone's screaming the only person who doesn't react is the drunk mom who like she really must have been drinking a lot to not react at all to a gunshot and I love that we see that like. I forget if she got, like, an individual shot or she was in the background, but we see... No, she didn't react at all. I, I don't think she moved. She didn't flinch. I think she was, like... She she looked like she was passed out drunk on the table, if I recall, or maybe that was later. And then it said, you know, the mess. R.I.P. Julian. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I, I gotta say, um... You know, okay, so... The chef makes makes good food, but not great, and so he shoots himself, and it's like, this chef is messed up. He hires people that only make good food? And the, 
Right, then there's the, the yeah, the ring finger, with the, you know, he's like, we're leaving now, you know, it's like, which hand will you be doing that with? Up, uh, should we choose? Left hand, you know, and ring finger, and it just chop it off, and you see the ring, you know, like, roll off and fall over, just, and Tyler's still eating, like, he's just, yeah. And the actors dropping names almost constantly. And, yeah, uh, and Chef says, we all die tonight. Let's see. And... Yeah, and, and you know, one of the things... Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, the Chef talks grievances and... I, I did like that, you know, the, the actor and the finance bros are like, okay, how do we... Yeah, I mean, nothing actually came of that. I, I, I didn't mind that it was there, but I feel like the fact that it's there once and then never again, like, why don't they... Because, the, you know, I, I get that he's like... Yeah, I, I just feel like there should have been... Like, I guess the idea is once the guy tries to break the glass and can't, then he just, he and the others just completely give up. I, I feel like it would have been better. I think what would have worked well, especially if we're trying to make fun of Steven Seagal here, again, not about his weight, but if the actor was like, I've done, you know, we've done action movies, we can do the, you know, yeah, the film actors guild kind of thing energy and just you know he like off with the coat and like ready to you know he he gets into a combat stance and he attacks one of the the servers and the server just like incredulously steps out of the way and he you know just trips over himself and just pathetically gets absolutely nothing accomplished and they're like well that was i mean i i knew you couldn't actually fight but that was pathetic even by those that you know that that kind of thing so so yeah but the fact that he gets because the, because there's three there's three finance bros so that four of the twelve guests are are getting together and they're you know the the finance bros are young and they look fit uh, you know so I yeah I, I don't know I just feel like either it shouldn't have been there I would I'm fine with one of them grabbing a chair and trying to break the glass but. The discussion before and then never again kind of felt off to me. But, yeah. Uh, Doug, the actual owner, bought a Red Bull, got wings. Not functioning ones. And, let's see. Yeah, I, uh, you know, this thing of the, the one of the finance bros basically says, no, no. no. We're gonna give you money. That means you have to do what we want. You know, it doesn't. That's not verbatim, but that's the essence of what he's saying. And he legitimately, he's baffled that there's someone he can't buy. And I, just, yeah, that was that was great. That silence means I'm free. Let's see. Your food isn't, but I am. Um, yeah, yeah, I love that, you know, so, so, yeah, Margot is brought into, like, this private area of, of chefs, and, you know, she speaks respectfully to him for about 30 seconds, and then he's like, nope, you're, I'm calling your bullshit, and then she keeps talking to him the way that's just, yeah, that was, <laughs> and, yeah, uh, apparently she was, you know, she also... Right. Real quick. Sex work is work. Yes. So the... the uh, Margot was also... You know, she, she worked for... You know... Yeah. As, as a escort also for um, Richard. And apparently he looks like Richard's daughter. Which was something that... Richard's wife noticed, you know, and this, yeah, and so the, the, um, Margot 
was supposed to jerk him off while looking him right in the eye and saying, you are a good man. And, and pretending to be the daughter. You know, I, I don't want to read too much into that. Um, sometimes a cigar just means you're a dick. And Tyler still wants to impress the chef. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah, and then, this is when, when the, um, Catherine says that, uh, chef, you know, made sexual advances towards her, um, and she, she, uh, shut him down, and then he did it one more time, what was that, um, a week later or something like that and he didn't fire her but he also didn't speak to her for the next six months or so something like that and so she stabs him in in like the leg or, so or something like that and I mean I yeah, it just, it feels, like, I, I do think that it's extremely important that we, you know, it's, it's very relevant. It, uh, yeah, it's essentially, it's a Me Too thing, you know, there's a, you know, we, we hear those stories all the time. And it's just not, they don't go anywhere with it. Because it's really, like, there's a, there's the way that, yeah, the, the you know, other, other, Feminism is uh, like the way that Tyler treats Margot, and the the uh, let's see the way uh, yeah the way George treats the the assistant. But other than that, you know, it's it's not really the the Me Too trait isn't developed, and that you know, and again, like uh, I don't know how much I want to give. Yeah, yeah. Um, Me Too is a big element of barbarian and fresh. You know, I'm not going to spoil exactly. I'm not spoiling those movies here. Um, but, yeah, here it just... So, so you know, it is being done. It is in these dark, progressive horror slash comedy, horror and or comedy movies. And here it just only showed up yeah honestly i feel like if you're gonna do that little with it you almost might as well not bring it up it makes it seem trivial so yeah not a big fan of that and yeah i i really love when you know the men will be allowed to try to make an escape for it 45 seconds uh -oh. okay i guess 45 seconds starts now you know and one after the other like the just i love the the looks on the faces you know richard at least says i'll i'll send help as soon as i can you know and the you know the the and george like hands the jack and just the the you know you knew i was you knew already i was an asshole you know and he runs off and she drops his coat on the ground i quite like that cuz i i just i would like to note it would have been just about as easy for her to just keep, uh, you know, keep keep the coat in her hand. Once she's into the restaurant, she could put it over a chair. You know, no one's asking her to, to carry it for, you know, an eternity or something. She chose to drop it on the ground. And I applaud her. And... Let's see. Yeah, I like you know when when all the women at the the table with with Catherine and suddenly Lillian is like okay so this you know uh, oh wow that was that was amazing taste incredible you know please please forget everything I've ever said or written before this point um so. Between us ladies, this whole thing with, you know, let's, let's not, there's no reason for us to, you know, we don't all have to die, you know, and, and, and Catherine's like, oh, actually, us all dying was my idea, and I'm super proud of it, and it's like, okay, uh, smoke him if you got him, I guess that's it then. 
and the the men trying to run that was that was quite funny and right and and margo tells the truth just you know it's it, it, like at this point who's who is she lying to why why would she still lie and it's just you know it's it's an evening of of the truth coming forward so so let's I love that Ted was found in the chicken coop. I, I just want to, for, for those who might not be aware, my father has chickens. And it, it varies, it varies. Some chickens are very tame and, and get along with, with people great. But something that is very often, they, they t a lot of them will get very territorial if you get into the actual coop. They don't. They, they're not a big fan of that. And if you, if you stay there for a while, they're gonna make noise about it. In the scene, they made no noise. The movie is basically saying Ted is a chicken. Like they, they, they're fine with it. They're like, okay, ah, I don't know how he's gonna keep warm with no feathers. Ah, he has way too many. Like. What's he gonna do with the two claws he has up here? Uh, whatever. If, you know, what you see is what you got. Go ahead and some, lay some eggs. You know, but yeah, he is he is a chicken. They are one hundred percent okay. With, you know, and he's and they're like, so you were the last guest we found. So here's a special treat, and they even close the window so he can sit there and eat it while while knowing. You know, as soon as he's done eating, he's going to have to go back inside to the, the homicidal chef. And, yeah. And, yeah, and Tyler knew that they were all going to die. And, yeah, you know, approached Margot knowing that that was, yeah. You know, because he just, he so badly wants someone to think that he's, really good at this you know he he wants to be thought of as a foodie and let's see. yeah and and you know tyler is asked to go into the kitchen and he's like so happy until he's told to cook which clearly he can't and i love that even his dish gets listed you know it's it's still like under was it like undercooked this and that and just yeah absolutely love that and margo is told to get the barrel by chef and she passes tyler having hanged himself and right and we yeah we find out that chef really hated the movie that george was in. <laughs> it ruined his only day off in months and yeah, Margot and Aaron fight in the kitchen. I love that her dying words are Chef never told me about the barrel. I didn't forget. Like that's she's not like, no, please spare me, or like, I didn't want to die like this. She's just like, I just want to set the record straight here. And <laughs> the I, yeah, I think the thing that uh Margot manages to to hit Elsa with that that knocks her to the ground and ends up with the with the death which was also it's one of those like ah uh, okay so we want to fight but we don't want people to think oh wow I guess this character killed someone so she kind of falls on the, I don't even remember how did because the knife ends up in her throat how did that happen without yeah anyway I just it didn't it didn't ruin the movie for me but it bothered me a little bit i was like that was pretty ridiculous like just it's it's were they were they really scared that people were going to think that oh shit my next escort is going to stab me in the neck i don't know anyway um let's see but but yeah the the thing that knocks her to the ground is the paco jet which they've mentioned uh, several times let's see and 
Yeah, the you know on the on the picture apparently Slavik was happy back when he was just making burgers, which is why Margot orders one later. Radio. What's going on with that radio? And Slavik knows a quote from MLK that isn't the one about judging people by their character, not the color of their skin. So he's not a conservative. Despite how happy he is to kill people, uh, let's see. Yeah, and the and the coast guard, you know, apparent coast guard shows up, and let's see the the. Um, yeah, you know, he's apparently a big fan of the movie that Chef absolutely hated. And, you know, autograph, and he writes, help us, and, you know, turns out the gun lights candles, and just, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you know, that was... I, I don't... Like, it wasn't, it wasn't an element that completely floored me, but... I mean, if I, th I, th I think the basic idea was we're supposed to think, oh, this is when this is when people get freed. You know, the 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 Coast Guard is going to get them away from there. Maybe he dies in a in a fight or something. But, you know, this is this is when it happens. And instead, just, yeah, turns out the the radio but the but he did show up on a coast guard boat which wasn't really necessary so i guess the chef yes i i don't the ending i uh, yeah i i i it wasn't really necessary it was necessary for margo to escape but it wasn't really yeah ultimately i don't really love that element the um, yeah anyway um yeah and margo claps to to get everyone's attention and she tells the chef you're obsessed you don't love the food you're making you know and i'd like to send my food back i'm starving i want a cheeseburger you know and it does as you know yeah that it looks tasty, you know. And she she takes a bite and she's like, "This is one tasty fucking burger." And yeah, she's allowed to leave because she asks for a to go bag because she she understands if she stays, she will get killed along with the the rest. And she you know she even pays for the the burger. And yeah, so he says s'mores are the. S'mores are the greatest insult. Let's let's see if I can find the. It's it's a it's a really great quote. I can imagine it is in the. Let's see. Yes, the s'more, the most offensive assault on the human palate ever contrived. <laughs> Jesus. And yeah, he he describes the entire yeah. And the, yeah, yeah, it's, you know. So, so he he burns all of them to death, and even the the s'more gets the the ingredients list, and it includes. And there's a direct quote: guest staff. <laughs> so yeah, you know, if you have a taste for that sort of thing, yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying I wouldn't eat it. That chocolate looks disgusting. That is it for those. So, getting into the final section, the go the thoughts uh, notes taken before watching. So that brings us there. We go. Um. Yeah, so I have some critic quotes. Oh, yeah, one per one person points out all non-white characters are ornamental. 
yeah, I, I wish I could really disagree with that, but yeah, it's sadly true of the movie. Uh, various people have said, yes, movie, the rich are bad people, we know this. Like, I, I do get, you know, personally, I, I don't think, I, 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 uh, I've watched a lot by now. I don't think I personally will ever feel that I've watched too many movies that communicate that the rich are bad people. But, obviously, if you make a lot of movies, if, if you say the same thing over and over and nothing really changes, then eventually people just get tired of the message and nothing has changed. So, yeah, uh, the movie should do more than just point out. And, and yeah, because, you know, the movie doesn't actually offer an alternative. Uh, I suppose you could say, you know, uh, sex workers deserve more... Yeah, se sex workers deserve more respect than they get, and service workers have empathy for each other, but at the end of the day, he was going to kill her even without. And that is maybe... Uh, yeah, I, th I think I, I have one more critic quote. Um, let's see. I will return to this right after because I think this might change my mind on it. So... This is a film which believes that too much wealth is an obscenity, but is it a left-wing film? I'm not so sure. I would guess that the filmmakers consider themselves to be on the left, but I worry about a couple of things. Firstly, the chef acts like a proto-fascist. His argument against the rich is less that they exploit the poor and more that they treat service workers... Uh, ta yeah, take service workers like him for granted. He wants respect and the share of the pie to which he feels he is entitled. Secondly, the film does talk about class struggle between those who give and those who take. And when the chef recognizes that Margot doesn't belong with the rich diners, he asks, asks her to take a side. And yet the choice that he offers is of no consequence, as he has decided what will happen. The idea that working people have any autonomy or can decide their own fate is entirely absent. There is, theirs is but to do and or die in the manner that he has assigned to them. The menu also has an underlying message that is slightly condescending. Early on, Tyler denotes that people who like vis visual art and music are just passengers. The real artists are the chefs who create things that we actually consume, which means that when the film insin insinuates that burgers are preferable to hot cuisine, there's the implication that high art is nothing that the poor should worry about. But we don't want... To be patronized, we want access to everything the rich have. None of this makes the menu a bad film, even though we are told the ending well in advance. We stick with it, genuinely worried what will happen, and hoping that many of the characters face as grisly an end as possible. At times, it is not as adventurous as it could be, but it's better to appreciate what's there than to regret regret what was never part of this film. So, to return to... Yeah, so, these service workers... Yeah, the service workers in the film are basically... They're going to commit suicide, and when Chef realizes that Margot is one of them, he wants her to be considered among them, but he still wants her to die. And, like... First, I want to acknowledge it is genuinely funny. Like, I'm, I'm glad that the movie didn't go cannibal, because it, it easily could have... I don't know that we necessarily need way more can I, I feel like we've gotten a lot of cannibal media you know and obviously there's only so many examples i can give without spoiling things but yeah if if you also watch a lot of these movies you'll know that there are other cannibal movies i'm glad at no point in this movie is anyone actually a cannibal like you might get the notion oh no chef and the, you know he's going to make he's going to make them into food which ironically he essentially doesn't like he says that the s'more is not really food so you know he cooks them yes but they're not they're not going to be eaten by anyone and the way that he's cooking them he does not think of as making food s'mores are not food so I want to acknowledge I'm glad that it didn't do the cannibal thing and I do think it is funny that he turns his staff and his guests into ingredients. You know, that is legit. Again, you know, when, you know, they, they're always listing the ingredients of these dishes. And there at the end, guests and staff are among the ingredients. 
you know, because, yeah, like, if he's already, you know, ag again, I get some people think this is obscene, but he is already taking things that used to be alive and cooking them and then we eat them. You know, he, he makes, I'm, I'm not vegan myself, but I can't really, I don't really have a good argument against, you know, yeah. I, I probably, honestly, I probably will end up going vegan. Um, I think right now is the wrong time to get into it. But he is taking, you know, what wasn't some of it like lamb or, or beef or something. You know, he's taking, I'm just saying, if we weren't killing them to eat, then the ones that are alive would live and, you know, they, they sure, that eventually die of natural causes, but there's still a difference between that and, you know, I'm, I'm not saying they would somehow live forever. I'm not saying we're killing things that would live forever, but we are still killing things, and, you know, don't get me started on factory farming, but, yes, I, I think, I, I want to acknowledge, it is legitimately funny that after, you know, after all these ridiculous foods, he turns all of them into a, a dish. Not not for anyone to eat, unless, who knows, maybe one of the firefighters is really, really hungry. But, acknowledged, that is funny. However, I do think, I, I think it would have been better if the movie had ended with a clear alternative. Maybe one, may, let's see, maybe something that would have been good is if the, let's see, so, so yeah, you have, you have this, you know, you have all these rich people, basically Margot is the only person in the restaurant, and, and maybe the chef's mom, although it seems like he could probably throw her, throw some money her way if, need, any, anyway, Margot is the only rich person, and ultimately she is the only one who, who makes it out. I guess maybe something like, uh, yes, here we go. So part of it is this thing of, you know, rich people are jerks, and they're treating service workers badly. How about, by the end of the movie, they have agreed, you know, they, they have been pressured into the the money going to you know to, to organizations that need it that help people instead and it leaves the the you know these previously really rich people you know yeah basically poor and you know now well now you have to pay for the for the food we made and, you know, they're like, but we paid before. Yeah, but that money's no longer yours, so that doesn't count. And they have to work in the kitchen, at the very least, until they've made the, the you know, what was it, $1,250, you know, something like that. And just, and yeah, and, and then they are the ones who have to, um, yeah, let's see, would it be, would it then be wrong to have them be subjected to bad, uh, bad behavior? Yeah, because I feel, yeah, yeah, I'm not entirely sure on that, but, but certainly, you know, as it is, I'm not saying that it's, the movie isn't saying that it has a solution, I'm, uh, it's not saying that the the cooking people is the solution. It's it's not trying to have a solution, and I think that is the. I'm, I'm not saying that their solution is bad. I'm saying it doesn't have a solution. That's the problem. I think the movie should, you know, produce a an alternative to to this. And yeah, um, let's see. I think that is basically. What I have to say, but but yeah, um, you know, laughed at almost every single joke. Uh, the the tension was really great, and the way it gradually increases. 
Um, the only thing, the only time I had a problem with them not fighting back was the, the that it didn't lead to more when the when George sat with the uh, finance bros. You know, I felt like that should have led to to something slightly bigger. Yeah, because for example, Richard, I thought that worked. You know, Richard is like, I'm gonna, you know, get out of my way. I'm gonna, you know, and then they chop his finger off, and he does not try to fight back for the rest of the movie. I feel like there needed to be something like that for the the. Yeah, because okay, now I struggle to recall if the finger cutting off was before or after, but I feel like it was after. And anyway, regardless. Yeah, uh, I think that is everything. Right, uh, I like the, the the fact that at the very end we see, no, 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 she was hungry for more than just the one bite. She just knew if, you know, if I ask for her to go back, he will let me leave. And if I don't, I'll, I'll stay and, and die. Right, I did notice that the, um, ah, uh, what's her, um... Richard's wife. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't keep track of all of these names. Um, you know, like, Margot is about to leave and looks at all the people. And, like, Richard's wife, like, gives her an encouraging nod. She's like, no, yeah. We, which I feel like is, like, her saying, no, we deserve it. Or, you know, I deserve it and I'm fine with them dying too. Some, something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I... I think it would maybe have been fine if she had a line right before she leaves. Even I, I think she should have just had. I, I honestly, I was surprised that she didn't have some line where just where you maybe think you know it looks like she's gonna be like you know maybe maybe she'll say I'm sorry you're gonna die or like I'll I'll send help. I don't know if they can get there in time, but I'll send help or something. You know, but instead of saying that, she says some kind of like, uh, let's see, um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, some, some, you know, she has some clever, like a one-liner or something. Uh, I feel like that could have, yeah. Um, yeah. I thought it was really funny when Lillian is in there, like, you know, the the chocolate melting down. That was that was quite funny. I like that um, the assistant like touches it and tastes the the chocolate. That made me chuckle. I think that is everything. So, yeah. Um, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what was your favorite movie like this. Do you agree with my rewrites? Do you have rewrites of your own? What was your uh, what was your favorite line? And yeah, if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell with the Paco Jet, and there should be a link to my main channel page. One, two more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week, reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie. And recently, the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog. It's what's catch my next week. I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording. And I will catch you next time.